Bungo Stray Dogs, one of the best superpower series of all time, and also one of the best ongoing series currently, in my opinion. Season 4 begun earlier this year and has been amazing so far. But with any superpower series, there's got to be some cool abilities. Without further ado, I am Tiago, the Tack on Tiago, and for today's video, I'll be going over the best abilities in Bungo Stray Dogs. Something unique to note before I get into the actual characters is how the mangaka associates certain powers to certain characters. As some of you might know, Bungo Stray Dogs translates to literary stray dogs, and each character in the story is named after a famous author or poet with an ability relating to their style or one of their works. And just like how Bungo Stray Dog seasons like starting with a flashback, the first character I'll be talking about is one who is predominantly featured in flashbacks, and that is Sakunosuke Oda. His ability is called Flawless, which is a reference to a short story real life Oda made which told the story of a woman who marries an employee through matchmaking and would non-stop complain about him. As negative as that sounds, his power is actually quite the opposite. He's allowed to see 5-6 to six seconds into the future at any given time. However, the future is set in stone as Oda could change his actions after seeing the future to make a completely new one. But this could be risky since if he changes the future ever so slightly, it might result in a worse danger that could be unavoidable. Oda though was a perfect person for this ability as he's also a master at hand-to-hand -hand combat and gunplay, making him quite difficult to kill on top of this already powerful ability. As shown in the flashback in Season 4 when a younger Oda was able to easily get by Fuyukawa. And speaking of season 4, why not jump into the antagonist we recently got acquainted with, Nikolai Gogol. His ability is called the Overcoat, which is in reference to a short story in 1842 about a counselor saving up money in order to purchase an expensive new overcoat. And of course, Nikolai's ability has to do with his overcoat, which is basically his cloak. And that cloak is very interesting. It essentially serves as a pocket dimension where he can transfer or manifest various things within 30 meters of him, in which Nikolai puts to insane uses. He was able to sever Atsushi's leg from his body or send a telephone pole flying out of his cloak. We are just getting started on what Nikolai can do, as he was only just introduced, but already he is showing to be a terrifying new villain. <laughs> On the topic of villains, one villain who has been quite underlooked nowadays is Francis Scott Key Fitzgerald, who was the main antagonist during Season 2. His ability is The Great Fitzgerald, which is a reference to the very popular book The Great Gatsby, and the wealthy millionaire Jay Gatsby. In turn, the ability is one perfect for those with money. The ability grants a boost to Francis's physical prowess like his strength, speed, agility, and endurance the more money he spends. Again, an almost useless ability for any normal person, but in the hands of a millionaire like Fitzgerald, his power is essentially limitless. As the more money he spends or items of worth he gets rid of, the more powerful he can get. And that's what makes this one of the best abilities, is due to its unlimited potential given the user. However, he was defeated by two people who formed an unlikely team up in Season 2. And one of those users is Ryunusuke Akutagawa, who has the ability Rashuman. Rashuman referred to a series of short stories where an astute man ponders whether to resort to stealing or starving to death. But in Bungo Stray Dogs, Rashuman is a shadow-like beast which can be summoned by Akutagawa's coat, and is very adaptable being able to switch between offense and defense with ease. It is probably the most versatile ability in Bungo Stray Dogs, as even I don't know its full capabilities and everything it entails. From a defensive standpoint, Rashomon is able to eat anything including the space between him and incoming attacks. It can also wrap itself around Akutagawa's body, giving himself armor. And from an offensive standpoint, there is almost nothing Rashomon can't do. Blades, claws, jaws, spikes, tendrils, many projectiles. It's no wonder Akutagawa has been causing so much trouble for the armed detective agency. What? 
But if anyone were to get hurt in the Armed Detective Agency, they would count on Akiko Yosano with her healing ability, Thou Shall Not Die which is in reference to a poem addressed to her younger brother in 1904 who went off to fight in the Russo-Japanese War, telling him to not die out there. The ability, as you can tell, is a healing ability, but one that is not as nice as it may seem. In order for the healing to work, the target needs to be so injured to the point that they're on the brink of death which is both a positive and a negative for the members of the Armed Detective Agency, since Akiko is quite sadistic and loves using her tools to get you to the point of almost dying to heal you right back up. This may seem inconvenient, but it's actually quite effective, as she can heal almost any wound inflicted upon you outside of illness or if they're too dismembered. She once was able to heal 80 people simultaneously in the past. Unfortunately, there is one member of the armed detective agency her powers don't work on. Or in fact, any power doesn't work on. And that is Osamu Dazai. His ability is No Longer Human, which was a novel about a man who is incapable of revealing his true self to others out of his detachment and fear of human interactions. And no power works on him since his ability allows Dazai to nullify any ability of anyone he touches. This has proven quite effective as he essentially can even the playing field between him and any powerful ability user. That's pretty much all there is to it. <laughs> But there was one person this did not work on, and that was Howard Phillips Lovecraft, whose ability, Great Old Ones, is a reference to the extraterrestrial beings in the short story, Call of Cthulhu. Great Old Ones allows Lovecraft to transform either a part of his body, or his entire body, into a giant monster with tentacles. In this state, he is only vulnerable from the inside, and due to this being a form Lovecraft can take, it doesn't count as an ability, so Dazai can't nullify him. In this form, Lovecraft has immense strength, durability, and an insane healing factor with rapid regeneration. He is almost impossible to kill, which is why it took a very powerful ability user in order to bring him down. In fact, it took probably the most powerful ability user in the entire series to bring Lovecraft down, and that user is Chuya Nakahara with the ability Upon the Tainted Sorrow, which is in reference to a poem that describes the fleeting feelings of sorrow, not necessarily sure how that relates to giving Chuya gravity control, but I'm not questioning it. Yes, the core ability of Chuya is gravity manipulation, which allows Chuya to manipulate the gravity of any object or individual he gets in contact with, with no limitations. He can manipulate matter in his surrounding area, redirect bullet fire, immobilize bodies by increasing or decreasing their mass. As such, he can also increase or decrease the mass of parts of his body, giving his punches more weight and power. And to top this all off, Chuya can access corruption, which allows him to manipulate gravitons in his surroundings, like crushing a tank from distance, or he can also throw many black holes. Only downside is he has no control in this state, so he'll continue in this state if it's not nullified by Dazai, or he would die. But let's switch gears. We've been talking about a lot of powerful characters including the most powerful ability user in Chuya. But what about a character who everyone is convinced has an ability, even though he does not? Rampo Edogawa. Rampo has no ability whatsoever, yet he doesn't know that and calls it super deduction. But not having an ability doesn't stop him from being one of the most powerful characters in the entire series. You see, Rampo is renowned as the greatest detective in the world. He is able to deduce the truth of any crime with every information about the crime, whether it's the evidence or the culprit, all in a matter of seconds. This is all due to his extraordinary intellect and deductive reasoning on human behavior. But he is so good at this that many people are convinced it has to be the work of an ability, since no mystery is too great for him. And lastly, no character's ability is a greater mystery to us all than Fyodor Dostoevsky. His ability is called Crime and Punishment, which is in reference to a novel where a student becomes guilt-ridden after they kill a pawnbroker for money. But so far in Bungo Stray Dogs, little is known about this ability, but we have seen some of its uses, as Fyodor was able to kill someone with a single touch, 
and it is not restricted from skin-to-skin -skin contact. However, as the series goes on, we will learn more about Fyodor and his ability, hopefully, as it seems to be one of the most dangerous ones yet. Well everyone, that is it for the video. What character and what ability is your favorite in Bungo Stray Dogs? Please let me know in the comments. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. It really means a lot. I am Tiago, the Tack on Tiago, and I hope you all have a nice day.